Ego, of all the destructive forces that law enforcement, individuals, and the community face, probably none is more dangerous than our own egos. When I think of some, uh, when I think of more erogenous mistakes and lapse of judgment, many involve egos. Some of us, if we're lucky, had good people around us who warned us about letting ego drive our actions. Many of us, like myself, had to learn through bad experiences and poor decision making. truck to the fire, you're, you're considered the first in truck is what we call it. Thanks, buddy. Um, that driver is the guy who's in charge of the water, so he doesn't go in. But all the other drivers that come after that, they go in. They go in. Thank you. And that made my legs moist. Yeah, you can get hot quick in this weather. Yep, you bring it down. It's connected already to the pump. Yep. So you just stretch it out. But yeah, first guy out there grabs the section. Hey, you said we're going to play boxing now. We're going to play boxing. All you guys sign in? All set? Chris, you ready to go? All right. Pump it to a certain pressure. After that, it gets a little out of control and you can't hold it, so. program that we're doing again is supposed to be trying to help change the narrative with law enforcement and the minority community but this is also giving you guys opportunity to see that there is career opportunity that's out there that you might not even be considering so just keep that in mind because right now we need to replenish the personnel that are working in the public safety sector and you guys are great candidates to do such things like that. So as you're thinking about your career options, you know, look at the two, the very two that you see in front of you. Actually, you see three because you know what? I function, you know, in the nonprofit sector. I also function in the Department of Transportation sector. So I wear a few hats. So just keep that all in mind as you're interacting. That's the whole point of this. This, this right here, y'all do, this ain't gonna get you 
to know a lot more people that you're meeting over the last four weeks. Um, couple house rules, we got the Tuscan Social Club that has got the bathroom for us. We got Breeze today, so it shouldn't be too bad on the heat side. You guys already know about the donuts. Y'all have already attacked that. You guys got water. Uh, we also have some, uh, we also got some food that's coming later on. Uh, so far, what have you guys gotten from what, we, what we've done over the last four weeks? You ain't got nothing? Oh, well then you my first one. Come on up, come on up. You my first one. If you ain't learned nothing, then I'm not doing a good job. Come on, come on up here. Come on, dude. Come on, come on. <laughs> oh, and you a leader? Oh, now you, now you being shy. Why were you being shy? Come on. All right, somebody else. Oh, uh, you all right? All right, China. I'm gonna have to put you on blast. Come on. I'm sorry. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. We got somebody also got to speak up loud, speak with volume. Yeah, officers are humans too. Officers are humans too. What else? I yeah, we can, you know what? We can clap that one up. Of course we can. What else? What else have we learned over the last four weeks? We've touched on four different topics. What were those topics? All right, so we were, we talked about conversation, discussion, argument, we and that, we talked about racial profiling. What else? How to conduct yourself during a traffic stop. We also talked about biases. Is there anything else? And driving laws. This week we're going to be covering ego. What do y'all know about ego? Oh, all right. Come on, speak up. I mean, hey, you, you obviously know. Hey, come on, speak up. Oh, you got to have something to say. You chocolate. Come on. What do you think it is? There's no, there's no bad answers there. Too much. Oh, pride. Chris, didn't we just talk about that today? Pride. You know, pride and ego work hand in hand. You, you know, today, this morning, when I arrived here at 8.30 this morning, Chris and I was here to try to clean up the park in preparation for this program. And you know, one of the things that I found about my pride and my ego was like, well, wait a minute, I don't own this. So it's not my, it shouldn't be my problem. So you know what? Why should I care? Do you all feel that way when you walk past a piece of trash? Do you pick it up? Sometimes. How many of us guilty of actually maybe throwing something on the ground? <laughs> something, you know, you know, something. So we all contribute to litter. And sometimes our pride and our ego can get in the way. In particular, ego is something that oftentimes get a lot of folks caught up with handcuffs on their hands. Would you guys agree with that? Some of you would agree with it. Who would disagree with that? And please, this is the opportunity to do so. Can I disagree in a different way? Absolutely. So here's what we talk about. I just said to this young lady over here about pride got, and ego. You guys speak up. Yeah, yeah, I get you. Speak pride up. Pride and ego, nobody likes to admit when they're wrong. Nobody wants to be seen as being wrong. I'll say that a lot of times that goes for police officers too. And when there are two competing egos that are trying to do this to one another, sometimes people are on the losing end, and it's not always right for either person, for either side, right? We teach people that there, there's a, a venue by which or in which to argue things, court hearings, things like that. Sometimes police officers get mad too, and it doesn't always work out well for everybody or anybody, not even the police officer. So that's where ego can hurt people. Don't be afraid to admit when you're wrong. Thank you, Lieutenant, on that. And you know, that leads into also accountability. We all got to be accountable for the decisions and the actions that we make. And ego is there. 
All of you are aware of who Kyrie Irving is. You do? Would you guys say Kyrie Irving has an ego? Yes. Why would you say he has an ego? <laughs> There's a why. Why? Is he just that good? Speak up if you're going to answer. Pride. So he's got pride. All right. So there's pride, but then has his ego hurt his career in some form or fashion? See? So while we're, again, while we're playing this game, because I know y'all eager to get there and we're going to sign y'all the colors, think about ego and put ego in your conversation as you're talking to each other. Because the ego is probably the number one thing that causes us all to find ourselves in a conflicting situation. And as you pointed out, Lieutenant, it's two egos battling with each other. Girlfriends do it. Kids try to do it with their parents. You try to do it with your teachers. You try to do it with anybody that you might have a disagreement with or don't see on the same level. So just keep that in mind. about letting ego drive our actions. Many of us, like myself, had to learn through bad experiences and poor decision-making. It's easily recognized when a suspect or violator is letting his or her ego talk them into handcuffs. Law enforcement responds to minor disturbance often at bars, homes, stores, and schools. Problems that could easily handle if the involved parties would just leave. Almost in, in, inevitably, one of the antagonistic declares, I'm not going anywhere. They are warned. They'll be arrested if they refuse to leave. Some good friends begged them to leave or bad friends encouraged them to stay. So they stand their ground, proclaim that they don't care and they'd rather go to jail then back down. However, when the cuffs come out, they change their minds, but then it's often too late. No matter how many laws and policy exist to guide our actions, at the end of the day, we're just regular people, including the men and women of law enforcement, subjected to all of the failings people have. If we'd all control our egos, I don't think we'd make half or our mistakes and probably would not be divided as a community. And law enforcement would have twice the support from the public. Controlling ego is easier said than done. It takes years for anyone to learn how to do it. It can't be taught as a formula in the classroom or in the police academy. It has to be a product of real life highs and lows, of forcing yourself to think straight and to do the right thing, even when you want to lash out. None of us can claim we've never fallen prey to ego. Nobody can expect new officers to hit the streets one day and have an ideological chip or e e ego chip on their shoulders under control. But we can talk about it. And that's the start as we begin our fourth week. Here are nine signs your ego is in control of your life. Too much is never enough. Disliking when people succeed. Redirecting the attention back to you. Constantly comparing yourself. Craving respect and recognition. Always being defensive. Rarely, if ever, helping others. Setting unattainable goals. And finally, manipulating others. I hope you learned something from this week's program 
as we had the Providence Fire Department, Providence Police, Smithfield, and also the Rhode Island State Police participating with members from the West End Recreation Center in Providence, Rhode Island, and also various students from some of the local schools. As we continue to change the narrative and perspective between law enforcement and the community, change is required in every individual and accountability is a must.